welcome to this video we're going to solve the integrated science practicals for the wasi 2023 so we start immediately identify it on the type of tooth so the a here is a canine so this is a canine which has a pointed enamel then the b here is the molar which has a wide enamel as well so we move on to the b name each of the parts labeled I, 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 and then vein. So you have your eye. Your eye is your cement. Your I, I is the enamel. This is the hardest part. Then you have your I, I, I. It could be your blood vessels or nerves. So you could just write one of them. Then your eye vein is your dentine. Then your vein, the root of the whole molar. So we scroll down and continue. Let's name the main function of A. The main, the main function of the canine is for tearing flesh. Yes, for tearing flesh. Then the II says each part II, II, IV, and then V. So your III. So assuming you wrote blood vessels, it helps to supply blood and the blood contains nutrients to nourish the tooth. Then the ivy. Ivy is the dentine which forms the greater part of the tooth. So as you see the tooth, it's just the enamel that you see at the top. But what really makes gives the tooth its mass is the dentine. Then the next one, then the vein. The vein is the root. The root serves as an anchor for the tooth. That's where the tooth is fixed. State two observable structural differences between A and B. So observable means what can you see? So one, the canine is smaller. That's observable. The molar is bigger as compared. Then the next one is the canine has a pointed enamel but the molar has a wide surface for chewing and grinding food. So the E says, stick to activities of human that can affect the part of the labeled vein. So the part labeled vein, the roots. So what can affect the roots? So one, the first thing that can affect the roots is sticking in too hot or cold food and the second one is not ensuring a good oral hygiene. Not ensuring good oral hygiene. When your tooth is affected by gum disease, it can affect the roots, leading to the removal of the actual tooth. So you have these two organisms. The first one is the tapeworm. Then the second one, which, so the C is the tapeworm, then the D is the weevil, the green weevil, to be precise. So classify each of the organisms as a pest or parasite. So this organism, which is the sea, is a parasite. It destroys, it stays in the host and it destroys the host. But this is a pest which destroys um, your food or crops, for example, maize or beans. In fact, that was the next question they asked. Which of the organisms named in A can infest a crop, that's the green weevil. Name two crops that can be infested by the organism named in I. So we have maize as I mentioned and then beans as I mentioned as well. So the next question, which of the organisms named in A can infest a farm animal? The tip one, name two farm animals that can be infested by the organism named in I. I, I. So we have sheep goat yes sheep and a goat then the name one kind of damage by each of the organisms named in a to its host so this for the sea which is the tapeworm it sucks blood in the organism then the d it reduces the quality of the grain by it by eating the food in the grain so the farmer wouldn't get 
the amount of money you're supposed to get. Then E says draw a life cycle of the organism in D. The we will undergo complete metamorphosis. So what you can do is you can just draw, move to the egg, move to the lava, then move to the pupa. So the lava is like the worm organism and then the pupa is more of like a waiting stage for the organism to mold to become the adult weevil. Stage one method of controlling the labeled organisms. So for the sea, for the sea is by deworming the organism and then with the D, it is by use of insecticide. Then figure three, that's number three. Figure three is an illustration of circuit symbols of a set of electric and electronic components labeled I to IX. So your I vein is a solenoid, then your vein is a diode, then the vein II is a transistor, and your vein II is alternating current source, alternating current source. Then the next you have here, see the function of II. II is a capacitor. Capacitor stores electric charges. That's II. Then the next one, III. Resistor. Yes. Resistor opposes the flow of electric charges. Then VI. VI is light emitting diode LED. It converts electrical energy to light energy. Then VIII. So the alternating current source supplies alternating current to an electronic device. Then the C, it says select a set of components, points connected in series to main I will cause it to light up when the key is closed but off immediately. So set of components that we would have to select. You know what would cause it to um, light up and then go off immediately is mainly the the capacitor. Draw a circuit diagram using the set of components you see. So, and question four, master the graph as well. So in an experiment to determine the molar concentration of a standard solution in a laboratory, different volumes of standard hydro sodium hydroxide were dried to constant masses. So the table below shows the dried mass in grams of the solid sodium hydroxide and its corresponding volume, the standard solution used. So this has to do with more concept, but standard solution as a subtopic. So when you plot the values over here, this is what you are going to get. This is what I had after plotting the values. And in the question I was asked to find the slope. So I did my short dashes as you can see. I did my short dashes. You have to zoom in for you to see. I did my short dashes. And afterwards I just match them to the values that I had. These are the values I had. And the other one is at the top. So I did this and then I got my slope. So I'll show you my slope. So you can also try to solve it and then put your slope in the comment section. So slope is such that even if you are using different values, you should get the same thing. High 0 0.15 gram per centimeter cube. Why gram per centimeter cube? Gram per centimeter cube because the y-axis is in grams, x-axis is in c and cube. So I was asked in the question later that what does the slope represent? It represents the mass concentration because it's in gram per c and cube. And I was asked that what will a volume of 200 cm cube give to give me 40 gram of the sodium hydroxide? So you can see, assuming I was using a rule to so match to the 40 gram because of the 200 cm cube, one adjustment I would have to do here. Now, when it comes to working in more concepts, the volume is mostly in dm cube. So 
looking at this one over here could have converted it to dm cubes so i would have gotten 30 over 0 0.2 which would have given me 150 gram per dm cube the last part of the question is asking for the molar concentration and that is why i did this conversion now this formula mass concentration equals molar concentration times molar mass i have to find a c but i know the mass concentration in gram per dm cube and i can find the molar mass very simple molar mass of sodium hydroxide equals 23 plus 16 plus 1 so these are the individual molar masses of sodium oxygen and hydrogen respectively so we have what 40 grams per mole so when you make C the subject we're going to have 150 over we're going to have 3.75 mole per dm cube no, there's nothing like mole per cm cube, that's why I have to do the conversion. Then the last part of the question is asking for two precautions to be taken when preparing the standard solution. Okay, so the first precaution is to read the volume from the meniscus. Click on the image by my channel name to see more videos which I make.